This is Obsidian. I use it to take notes on new things I'm learning and to capture cool things that I found on the internet. This app is completely free with no ads or tracking. You own all of your data locally so nothing gets uploaded to their servers. And it's simply the most powerful note-taking system that I've found. So in this video, I'm gonna show you my two-part system for my digital second brain. First with Obsidian and the format that I use to actually take digital notes. And second, how I actually go about ensuring that I don't forget the things that I learned. So even if you already know what Obsidian is or you have a second brain system, the last part of the video might be helpful for you. If you've never heard of a second brain, it's basically the idea that you have a database for different things that you learn or notes on different things that are important to you in your life. So for example, in my second brain, I have notes on different things I'm learning, like in books, YouTube videos, and different concepts. But I also have notes in my personal life, like notes on different restaurants that I've been to or even standard procedures that I've learned that are useful. I found it super useful to have all these notes consolidated into one spot and to see how they link with each other in this knowledge graph. And because all of my notes are stored locally, it's also really easy to look them up when I need to. If you've seen some videos on my channel, then you know that I really like analog systems. Like I track all my goals in my journal, but I think one aspect where analog falls short is to take extensive notes on a lot of different topics. It's hard to organize physical notes and to look stuff up. So I found it useful to have a digital database for different things I'm learning and to keep my analog journal purely for reflections, goal tracking, and as a creative outlet. All right, now that you know what a second brain is, I'm gonna walk you through how Obsidian works, the key features that make it from different note-taking apps, and also how I actually use it. So Obsidian is a note-taking app that's designed from the ground up to be a knowledge management system. Let me walk you through some of the key features. So first, for some context, like when you download Obsidian, it's probably not going to look exactly like mine. The theme that you see and the font that you use, that's just the style that I like and you can really customize it to however you want. One of the cool things about Obsidian is that there's this view called the graph view, where you can see a knowledge graph of all the notes that you've taken and how they connect with each other. Making a note is as you would expect. You can easily make a note and type anything you want, but really the core of Obsidian are what they call backlinks. So if you type double brackets, you can link to any note that you've made or even a note that you haven't made yet. So for example, I can type something like, so this is related to the federal funds rate which is something I already took notes on before. And there's a link to this concept. What's really powerful about backlinks is that it's not just a one-way link to a note. You can click on backlinks on the bottom and see every note that you've taken that has this concept within it. So it's kind of like building your own Wikipedia database of everything that you learn and having everything connect with each other. Within any notes, you can also use tags to categorize them. So for example, with this one, I tagged economics and I can easily just search economics and see the different notes that I've taken. Because all the notes are saved locally on a computer, you can sync them across your different devices with iCloud, Google Drive, or even Git without any subscriptions. One more feature I wanted to mention about Obsidian that I really like is that you can navigate everything using something called Vim shortcuts. So basically you can jump across different notes and lines without ever having to touch the mouse. It definitely takes a while to learn it, but after I learned it, it's really hard to switch to any other note-taking program. All right, so now I wanna actually talk about how I use Obsidian and the format that I use to take notes. The first thing that happens when I open Obsidian is that it makes a new note with today's date as the title. And I sort of just use this daily note as an unorganized way to capture different things that I came across on the internet or different concepts that I wanna learn more about. And I can write something down and put a hashtag so it's easy to find. And so I'll just have different stuff throughout here. If I have a call or meeting, I'll type hashtag meeting and then I'll take notes on different things there so that it's easy to look it up later in the future. I can just go to this date or search hashtag meeting and find notes that I've taken on this call. When I actually come across something that I wanna take notes on, like a concept, a video, or a book, then I'll type double hashtag, and then I'll write the title for that note. For example, let's say I came across this concept called inversion thinking, and I wanna take notes on this. So I'll just type double hashtag and inversion thinking. So now it creates a link to a note that doesn't exist yet. When I open it, it then makes a note. So how I actually like to take notes on new concepts is that I like to follow what's called the Feynman technique. If you've never heard of the Feynman technique, I'll probably make a dedicated video about that in the future, but it's basically the idea that you imagine yourself explaining this concept to a child. It sounds pretty basic, but it really forces your thinking and tests your understanding to be able to summarize a complex topic into a very simple thing. So what I do is first I take a lot of unorganized notes. So this could be excerpts, uh, this could be just um, random things that pop out to me. And then once I'm done, I'll go back to the top and 
have a summary using the Feynman technique. So in Obsidian, you can do something called a callout, which kind of looks like this. And you can do a TLDR. And that's pretty much it. You can do the same thing for books. You can do the same thing for YouTube videos. You can have all your notes from different chapters. And at the very top, you kind of summarize everything into the core concepts. And then finally, to organize this page, I'll use tags to organize them. And I just have this one plugin that will organize the notes into different folders based on the tags. So for me, I just have a lot of different folders for different categories that I'm interested in. If I scroll to the bottom, I can also see the backlinks to other notes across this. And if I go to this date, I can also see the other things that I did or took notes on. There's also an extension that I use on the browser that immediately makes any page into a new note. So that's basically how I use Obsidian to capture new things I came across, take notes on different meetings, and to learn new concepts. But one problem with this is that even if you've taken a lot of notes about different concepts within Obsidian, it's not that powerful if you can't easily recall those concepts in your head. So that leads me to the second part of my system, which is to actually remember those concepts. So most of the time, just actually understanding a concept and using the Feynman technique can help you remember it forever. But for certain things, I find it to be pretty helpful to deliberately try to memorize them as if I was studying for a test. The way I've done this is with this app called Anki. I actually made a dedicated video about Anki and how it works scientifically before. But basically, it's a flashcard app that guarantees you will not forget anything that you put in. This is the core of how I learned Japanese and how I passed the highest level of fluency exam in a year. But now in addition to studying Japanese, I also use it to memorize things in my personal life and also concepts for my second brain. If I make a flashcard and I input in here, I know that I will actually never forget it as long as I review my flashcards. It only takes me 15, 20 minutes a day to review my cards, but the cost to benefit ratio has been massive. Not only can I keep track of an entire language in my head, but also learn a bunch of new things and concepts. Basically with Obsidian, when I learn a new piece of information that I would like to remember, then I make a simple flashcard as a cue for it in Anki. And then when that flashcard comes up, if I don't remember it or I want to review it, then I can easily just look up that concept in Obsidian and refresh my memory. As for my Anki settings and my car setup, that might be a little bit too nerdy to talk about here. So I'll leave that as a channel membership video for those who are interested. The last thing I want to say is that what I found with stuff like this is that it's pretty important to have a chill or minimalistic approach that is the most sustainable for you. To me, this is a pretty chill approach. I don't spend that much time on Anki or that much time intensely taking notes. And just having this simple system of taking notes and reviewing them makes it easy for me to continue to learn new things even now. So definitely try it out and see what works and what doesn't because most likely your second brain system will be different from mine. That's it for my two-part system of how I use Obsidian to take notes and learn different concepts and use Anki to remember them. And uh, yeah, that's it for this video and I'll see you in the next one. Let's get it.